What does the future look like? What does 2025 look like from an AI perspective? I, I would hope that by 2025, the, the AI, I mean, it's not, you know, the AI should help you prioritize the things you actually care about in your life, and it should help you make those a reality, whatever it is. It could be personal, it could be business, it could be hobbies, whatever. If you want to create something, the AI is going to make it very easy for you to create that thing. So in some cases, it will be like an enabling tool. I don't know if you've used Descript, which is a podcast platform for editing. That's, that's magic, right? I don't know if they use AI, but it, it's, it's indistinguishable for magic, right? You, you, can, you see the transcript, you change the words, and it puts the words in your own voice back into the, to the podcast. So things like that, it, you won't know whether it's AI or not. It won't matter. It's the technology piece. But you're going to see more, more things like that. And then on the creative side, the AI can be creative for you, and you you do not need to have the toolkit that you used to to do certain things. So that's the crazy thing. So like in um, you watch The Matrix. Yes. All right. Yeah, she's she's like, hey, put the how to fly a helicopter cassette thing in, and like download the program that helped me fly the helicopter. Right. Mm. What happened? Well, now the helicopter just fly itself. Right. She didn't need to do that. <laughs> so the innovation is like the least path of resistance. It's actually easier to get electronics and computers to do things rather than implant them into your brain and stuff. So we're we're comfortable with screens, we're comfortable with like a laptop or a, a phone, right? Mm -hmm. And I think when you're looking at social media and what's happening in po the podcast world, more of your life is being recorded and broadcast. So I, in terms of like where media is headed, I'm like, you know, at the end of the day, probably just put on like the Justin TV, like headset and it's just filming my day. And then the content generation is just happening in real time in my world. And then the computer will pick out the important things that it thinks can get engagement and just shoot that to the right channel. Right. So that's like, that's obvious that once you think about it, you're like, yeah, that would make sense. Like, how come I can't just, like, how come Danny can't just be Danny in his own world and try to have the most interesting life he can? And it automatically gets live streamed, chopped up, spit out, whatever, you know? And then, like, Smike can just be like, yo, Danny, want to talk? And then you're like, yeah, you know? It's, and then it's just, like, this seamless thing. So I think that's where one, one piece of um, the creator economy is headed because people are really very curious about people. What year yeah. do you think that is, that prediction? If you had to... I mean, you kind of have prediction. some people doing that now. With um, a phone, kind of, and, and not exactly like the computer is generating the content. Yeah, it's not we're, as... We're that, like one layer away from that. Uh, in terms of like the streamer celebrity, like we're a little bit, we're a little bit away from that, but it's probably just a software issue, maybe a hardware streaming issue like it can it can be done again um on the creative side like the computer being creative for you that's that's more in the domain that we're building in and that's in the next in the next 18 months so in the next 18 months a computer will be able to look through 24 hours of footage and then no not not an art that's not our platform but but i think that you should expect that on a, on a less than three year time scale, for sure. And what about Neuralink? How does that play a, a role, if at all, in what know. you're doing? I have no <laughs> idea. Does that scare you? Um, well, is any any technology can scare you, good or bad? Right. Does GPT three scare you? No. No. no, I mean, no, because here's how it works. Humans write stuff and put it online, right? Yeah. So you have one, one level of human writing. The second level is humans at OpenAI decided what text would be in the data set. Mm. Does that make sense? So then, all right, so the AI itself is just the, this model that takes all this text 
and puts weightings around each word. That's it. It's like Google, basically. It just configured itself, right? right. So it's a, it's the self-configuring model. I hope that's how it works. I don't know how it works. <laughs> and, uh, and then we, as an application, we design to build a tool, we design a set of instructions that gives the model a set of examples that we want it to follow to generate this output, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the third level of human inputs. Then our user describes the input that they want this set of outputs for. So that's the fourth human interaction here. And then the model will generate the output, right? And then it streams into our app and we show it to the user. And it's a, it's designed as like a brainstorming tool. So right. it, it can um, like blog ideas, uh, Facebook ad copy, product descriptions. It can generate all that from a short description of the product or the service because the model knows something about every product already because it's trained on the entire internet. And, um, and so then it's on, on the user to look through the results right. and pick out the ones they want. Because it's, we're going to give them like a very, very creative set of results. It'd be very different. So that's five levels of human interaction, right? To And then they can edit them, obviously. So when it's like, hey, are you scared of what the AI can do? Well, think about like what open AI worries about this a lot because that's like their brand. So people are generating fake articles, political stuff, like uh, violence, expletives, whatever, then that's kind of, it tarnishes their brand and all that, which is fine. Like we, we don't want to help people do any of that stuff. But at the end of the day, um, I'm not particularly concerned by that kind of stuff because of all of these levels of human involvement. I think people are still the ultimate deciders about how they take this content. I actually think that the social media algorithms are a bigger problem than the content itself because that's that's deciding what content you see. And if you see this content over and over again, it can imprint mm. in ways that, that may not be desirable because it's driving these metrics up. So I have a bigger concern about that than I do generated text like it's easy it's easy for us and for open ai to screen that to filter it out and say okay like let's just do nice content right <laughs> the world needs more nice content right why are you you know generating all this other stuff now on the flip side if you look at the most popular movies they're violent as hell dude like right. you have insanely violent stuff we are not allowed to generate any like you couldn't even generate a script for that in our in this tool so mm -hmm. I, I think that the toxicity factors are overblown. I mean, we had a, we have a pres we had a president, love him or hate him, that generated toxic content all day long. It was like an actual human, right? We didn't need a an AI to do it, right? So, and some people liked the content because he was expressing a thought they had. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, if it's trained on the internet, the internet's a a bunch of stuff humans thought of it's a reflection like, it's reflection on us and it in most of the time and the way i look at it now i think this is actually pretty important is look at human uh expression as a like a bell curve okay mm -hmm. so you've got like um common ways people think and talk is at the top of the curve in the middle so it's like how, like where we all mirror each other. This is like where modern society is. But then there's a bell on the side and there are these tails. Mm -hmm. In these tails, you find people that are pushed out of the middle and they, they kind of become extremists. They have like viewpoints that are very different. But what you have to understand is that humans are designed onto that curve. So mm -hmm. I have two brothers Dude, we're at very different parts, the three of us, very different parts of that curve. Mm. All right. So if one of my brothers does something, let's say he goes to jail, 
or he's on TV for something that I don't like, I wouldn't have done. Right. People are like, oh, well, that's the whole family, you know, it's just <laughs> trash. And you're like, no, dude, like everybody's got a family member, right? So you see the skew, you see the distribution. Humans work the same way. So, Danny, you will have ideas that come into your mind, right? That are bad, like you don't want to express. So it's like, yo, dude, that, I hope I don't say that for real, right? <laughs> Yeah, which is why drunk people are assholes because they right. say it right because their filters down. But that's coming. That's in your head, right? And so let's go back to Goggins, right? Goggins is saying, I "Love it." The the biggest trash talker on the planet is you. Yes, on yourself. And the reason I want to bring this up, the reason why we love Goggins so much, is because we know that's us too. Yes, we know we are yeah. capable of that. If yeah. we went to that extreme, and that's why we relate to it. Yeah, I don't care about Goggins, and he doesn't care if I care about him, right? Right? Because it's about like who is who does Danny think he is? What does Danny think he's capable of? And once you start asking yourself like like that introspection, it's really it's good. I haven't done psychedelic drugs. But people tell me this is like what happens. It breaks down your ego, and then you can see like how you're acting, mm -hmm. how who do you think you are versus who you portray in real life. Self awareness, right? self meditation. Meditation does the same thing. Yeah, and it, but it's the multiple personalities. It's like this very aggressive person, this really nice person, this creative person. Like you have all these capabilities in. Um, you have to like work on identifying and suppressing the ones that are not helping you achieve your goals and mission, right? Yeah. And it, like the one, the part of you that's lazy, like that everybody's got that lazy part of them, right? And then you're like, you have to push them away. You got to push that lazy person out. 